Thanks. Cool. Um, so yeah, mental colors. So um, what we're trying to build in mental colors that we want to give um, access to um, experienced mentors in the tech field. Um, so mentors that are that work at big companies and have a diverse set of experience. We want to make it easy for um, folks like yourself to get access to to these mentors and learn from them. Um, so what we've done so far is um, next slide, please. Yeah, so we've pulled together um, almost 300 mentors at this point, and our mentors are from um, so many different companies across the globe, uh, a lot of fine companies too, some of which you recognize. Um, and our mentors have a diverse set of experience, um, and they're just there like looking to, to kind of help you as you transition into tech or advance your careers in tech. Um, some of the the support you can get from our mentors, um, next slide please, is that you can have one-to-one -one sessions. Um, I know that some of you have already started booking mentors. I encourage everyone to do so. Um, you can also get this kind of forums where you, um, you get access to the mentors and um, our mentors kind of talk around a specific topic. Um, today we'll be talking about Scrum, so this is just one of the different um, kind of sessions that you can benefit from. Also, you can get support not only on some specific technical skill you're building, but just um, uh, improving your soft skills and, um, and kind of preparing yourself for interviews or just getting general career advice on you know, where to position yourself in tech and, and whatnot. And you could be learning more than just one thing at a time. So you could be talking to a mentor, supporting you on um, say like um, system system design or like the cloud or like um, um, back end or any aspect of tech that you're really interested in you can just book around that and we have mentors to to assist you through that um, the last slide uh, Danilo yeah and like I said we have lots of sessions like this um, every week so check out the sessions that we have and um, yeah feel free to to attend those. So that's it. Um, now we're going to go straight into the, the actual session um, with Danilo. Um, so Danilo, I'm going to pass it over to you. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to, for being the opportunity, for having the opportunity. So my name is Danilo. I'm Brazilian. I'm 30 years old. I have, I'm a kind of pet guy. Uh, nowadays, I'm working as a software engineer uh, at Viaplay, actually. And uh, previously, I've been a, a team lead at RTB House. Uh, today, we're going to uh, go through like, uh, what kind of is this, the agile mindset, uh, understand the difference uh, between like uh, the waterfall and the agile approaches. Um, and then we are going to explore a bit um, how a real world scenario works in a Scrum environment. And after that, I, had, uh, I have uh, some tips for developers uh, and how to perform better in a agile environment. So let's get started. So the agile mindset, actually we have, um, we don't have like an agreement on this on this uh, mindset, but I, I gathered some things that I find super important for everyone that uh, wants to think agile. So the first thing is respect, or actually two things, respect and collaboration. Actually, um, the idea here is to have an environment where you don't point fingers, you don't blame. Actually, the your approach should be like support the, your teammates to do better next time. So if you find something um, I don't know, that can be better. You can point it out, no, no blaming. And of course, be open for feedback for yourself as well to improve. So be open to improve, be respectful, collaborate very much. So uh, communication is um, the key. It's also, it's also helpful for knowledge sharing as well. So that's the idea. Uh, the next part is uh, continuous improvement. So um, you can 
Yeah, continuous improvement. Be open for feedback and pay attention to feedback, per perhaps address this feedback. The next step is pride, because you need to be proud of you what you're doing and what you're delivering uh, in the end of the day. So the idea is to deliver the best you can with the tools you have right now. So it's uh, it's important also to perhaps avoid judging yourself, that yourself from the past, because that person did the best at that time with that tools. Now, perhaps you have better tools and you can do even better. So that's the idea, improve every day. The next part is uh, the focus on uh, delivering value. So the idea is that like uh, when it comes to developers, uh, you shouldn't only code. The idea is to understand why you do what you do and what's the goals on doing what you do. And then you can prioritize like uh, what's best for the company, for your customer, for your product. So that's the idea. The, the goal is uh, the value you deliver with your uh, job. Not, it doesn't matter if it's coding, documenting, sharing your knowledge or things like this. And uh, the last thing is adaptation to change because um, it's common for us to, to hear the expression like, but it's not the plane. So let's not do it this because it's the plane is different, but actually um, it's not applicable anymore because uh, the plane should change if the requirements change. So it's pointless to keep the same plan if uh, the context changed. So that's the idea. That's the idea. Of the, that's the whole idea of agile. It's not connected to delivering faster, but better. And perhaps it will be faster as well. But the idea is to be better. Um, so let's compare a bit uh, how it works or how it uses to work on waterfall uh, approaches. So we had like several roles. So much, much more than these ones, uh, many more than these ones. Uh, but let's say we have here in this team like business analysts, project managers, like designers, testers, and developers, and all the requirements, all the requirements used to be gathered at first. I mean, all, I mean, like every single requirement. And then business analysts like broke everything down, super understood like how, yeah, how it impacts like the, the end user and, and how what's expected and so, and then it goes to design and the designers usually created every every single piece of uh, design when it comes to like user interactions uh, and also like user interfaces and things like this. After that, the, the developers received this bunch of things, like all this entire system uh, to start coding uh, based on this material that was uh, created previously. And after this coding session that usually you use it to take like months uh, if you went to the next step, which is testing. So also testing all this entire system. And of course, uh, into these uh, parts, it was common for us to find, oh, perhaps there's something new or there's something wrong or there's something that we didn't map. And then what happens? We go back to the requirement, requirement gathering and then we analyze again and then we design again and then that's the that's the deal so when it comes to like the waterfall approach we can say that uh it's pretty easy to learn because it's pretty straightforward right it's linear so it's easy but when it comes to like the uncertainty of the things that perhaps are more complex 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 i'm sorry it's difficult to say that the approach is good for that so let's say it's it's so so the next part is the complexity handling, because uh, when we have some steps to map some things and other steps to test these things, it's difficult to oversee, uh, to foresee the complexity. Uh, so that's why I put like mid, let's say. Um, and then adapt uh, adaptability, it's low because I need to redo all the steps uh, previously done when I find something new. And uh, the time the time to delivery is like the worst part on that because my software is only ready after all these steps. But the problem is that we found so many things and we began again from the beginning and then the mess 
is, <laughs> is there. So time to deliver is bad. And also the last thing here is that after we deliver, we have the customer feedback, which can perhaps bring us to the first for, for the to the first stage again. So yeah. And then what's Scrum? So before we analyze Scrum and see how it works, what's Scrum? Actually, Scrum came from this messy environment, let's say. And the purpose of Scrum is to address complex problems. That's it. That's it. It's not many things that people usually say. So let's keep this. I, I got this from scrum.org, which is like the main or the single source of truth when, or truth when it, it comes to Scrum. So let's say that's the idea. Address complex problems and deliver value. That's it. The most value can faster we can. That's it. So let's analyze what's uh, Scrum. So the idea here is that we have the same team more or less, but some roles has changed a bit. So we don't have the business analyst anymore. We don't have the project manager anymore. We can have these roles in a enterprise organization doing things within an environment that is also place for Scrum. It's possible, it happens, it's normal. But when we analyze Scrum alone by itself, these roles are not part of the play. So that's, that's why they are not here anymore. So in, instead of that, some responsibilities of these roles that I mentioned before, they went to new roles. So we have like the product owner, we are going like deeper on these roles uh, uh, a bit later, but that's the idea. Product owner, the Scrum master, the developers, and uh, here we have uh, any other like any other uh, kind of development. So it can be like designers, it can be like cloud specialists, it can be like security specialists, it doesn't matter. The team actually, and also the testers are part of the team as well. So the idea here is that we have all these steps in a way that it, uh, after all these steps are done, it feeds the, the, the first step with new insights and then we do that again and again and again, but with a single difference. In a waterfall uh, approach, we deliver value only in the last step for the client, for the actual user, for the end user, for the one who is our goal, let's say. For Scrum, it's not true. Actually, we select some a, a, a small set of all the tasks or all the things we'd like to address. And then we deliver this single small piece uh, uh, in an iterative way. So every time, uh, let's say we have like two weeks of, uh, of um, iterations, we will deliver every two weeks something to the user. What something? We will decide, we will go uh, further. But uh, the idea is to deliver uh, constantly for the user and, and get our clients part of the feedback loop uh, and, uh, and, uh, and allow our clients to make the difference on the final, on the final uh, product. So it will be much more fit for them because they were part of it. So when we analyze the same, uh, the same aspects, it's not that easy to learn because uh, the steps are uh, a bit different, it's not linear, but yeah, let's say it's kind of easy to learn. But when it comes to uncertainty addressing, it's uh, better because we are discovering and adapting uh, towards this uh, uncertainty uh, in a much shorter period of time. So it's easier to find problems and address problems. When it comes to complexity, it's the same case because we discover complexity, we address this, this complexity, and perhaps we deliver a single piece of code or of a product, I'm sorry, uh, that address this complexity as well and uh, I don't know, deliver value for the, for the uh, end user. Uh, when it comes to adapta uh, adaptability, Scrum was made for enabling uh, adaptability. So yeah, that's why it's high. And finally, time to delivery, I put high here because actually 
the, perhaps the final product will take some time to be delivered, let's say. But we will deliver value for the client much, much faster, much faster. And we'll keep delivering value as well constantly. So that's the idea. Uh, okay, going further, we have some um, values that Scrum prom promotes for us to be able to perform our tasks in a optimized way, let's say. The main one and the, the one that I love most is the courage, because it takes courage for us to come back to our sometimes manager, so, sometimes product owner, sometimes product manager, and say, no, no, no about what? I won't do this. It's not well described, so let's describe, describe it before taking action. No, I need, a, I need to do a proof of concept before trying to deliver something real. Uh, I need to analyze better. Um, things like this. It, it takes courage because you're kind of um, pushed to deliver. But the idea is to deliver better, not, I don't know, uh, faster, but without a value. So that's the idea. Of course, we have respect again. Openness has a place on, on, it comes to like feedback and addressing the feedback. Commitment is something uh, important so, as well, but the focus, actually all these other values, um, they come together when it comes to focus because uh, Scrum is a set of tools that help us to focus on what matters. So that's why we deliver more value let's say, or faster, because uh, what the difference is the focus. Waterfall, we focus on everything all the time. On Scrum, we focus on what's mo most important now. And then after it's delivered, uh, we focus on, the, on, again, what's more important at the time. And then that's the, that, that's the deal. So uh, let's break down uh, a real scenario, let's say. So, oh, sorry. So let's talk about Instagram. I believe it's super, I don't know, uh, is it? Uh, everyone is super well known, right? So let's imagine we are, we know like uh, what we'd like to deliver, but yeah, that's Instagram, right? And then what happens? Before everything started, our pro, oh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, the idea here is that before we start working, we need to have a product backlog, which is a set or a list of uh, activities or uh, tasks that we need to perform in order to deliver value to our uh, client or to, uh, I, I don't know, deliver value for our product. So uh, before everything uh, starts, uh, we have our product owner, we, who is the responsible for um, the, maintenance of this uh, product backlog. And let's say this uh, product owner, uh, I don't know, interviewed some key users and stakeholders and, and people like this. And it has this, uh, this, this the product owner has this uh, list, for example, oh, we need to deliver user registration, follow users, feature, post pictures, like pictures, search profiles and tag people. So that's the product. Let's develop, right? Uh, but then uh, the product owner came to the developers and said, oh, this is what we need to develop. But then the developer said, oh, but in order for us to deliver this, we have some technical things we need to develop, perhaps first, perhaps, uh, I don't know, during the, the way. So then the product owner also included on this uh, product backlog, Let's say the developers brought only three items. So ah, we need to deploy the pipelines. We, 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 uh, sorry, we need to create the deployment pipelines. We need a base design for us to develop the, the screens, for example, on pages. And we have also like some infrastructure uh, set up to do as well. And then this, everything that you're seeing on the screen is the product backlog now. Nice. And then it goes. Uh, to our next step, which is the, the sprint planning. The sprint planning is a meeting that uh, allows the team to select, of course, prioritize, of course, describe better, of course, break down the, the work, but select what is going to be done 
based, of course, on the prioritization that was done by the product owner. But it's not something that the product owner can, um, I don't know, like push the team to develop, you know, like the team is the one responsible to, to select what's better for the team to develop on what's most important in terms of like delivering value uh, in the end of the day. So what happens? The product backlog was like listed by the product owner. And then the team, like the entire team with the support, the facilitation of the Scrum Master, uh, select some things that are in the product backlog. Let's say it's ordered, it's sorted by priority. So this is the most important. In the, like, uh, on the perspective, uh, on the product owner's perspective, let's say. But then the team, said, okay, the, the pipelines are important. These we can skip, these we can skip, but the base design we are going to do. So it came here and the next one, next one, they analyze kind of everything. And then of course, in a real world, you can't like analyze all the plannings in the entire backlog, the, the entire uh, product backlog, but in a, I don't know if it's short, it's possible. So let's say the, the team has chosen like this, uh, three uh, main goals, let's say, or main features to be worked in the first sprint. Okay, so we need something else to start developing um, the, 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 the features. This is uh, called the sprint goal because the, the sprint goal enables the team to choose and to prioritize during the sprint uh, to pr prioritize it, uh, its work and also perhaps swap tasks or swap features to fulfill this goal, to achieve this goal. So a sprint goal can be like, for example, enable basic features, for example. And then you say, oh, but perhaps it's too broad because basic features is like too generic, uh, too generic. Yes, but that's the idea because if the uh, concept of basic features change during the sprint. During the sprint, it's better for us to change what we are going to deliver since the the context changed. So that's the idea, um, and this is responsibility of the team. Uh, uh, yeah, and then of course we we can have like other uh, goals, like for example, increase user experience. Uh, I don't know. Uh, metrics by 50%, for example, it, it, it could be good as well if it's measurable, but we can't, not, not we can't, but it's not the best if we have a sprint goal like deliver the tasks A, B, and C. Why? Because it, it blocks the adaptation, because we are listing what we, are, we need to do, and it's kind of, it's not a goal, it's a task list. It's not a goal. The goal is some, something the team will go will per pursue for two weeks, for example. One sprint can take from two to four weeks, perhaps. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's not like a written stone, but yeah, that that's mostly it, let's say. And then uh, after the team like has selected the sprint backlog, it's time for them. So the the PO is the the product owner is not here anymore, actually. But uh, this role can be here, perhaps to like answer some questions and I don't know, enlighten something, but uh, it's not required, it's not mandatory. Then the team will bring, like will break down this big feature, these big feature, features into smaller tasks. What's the best or the optimal size of a task? It, it should be done in one business day by one person. Perhaps this is the best, but of course we have several teams working on like different ways. But let's get let's take this guideline. So, uh, for example, with the facilitation of the Scrum Master, the team like the Scrum team will like for example break down the deployment pipelines into tasks like for example set up GitHub Actions, set up SSIH connections, set up GitHub hooks. I'm like making this uh, out of the blue, but that's the idea. Break down this like big thing into easier, uh, yeah, easily achievable or easier achievable uh, tasks. Uh, for example, base design. 
which is based sign. So let's break it down. So we, we need to create our first uh, first screen, and then we develop the header of this screen, and then the footer of the screen. So yeah, that's the base design. Nice. User registration. It's a feature. What is like uh, uh, what the user uh, registration comprises of? For example, create API for registration. So it's a backend task. For example. But then we have like created the registration form UI. So perhaps it's a front end developer uh, task. And then we have like set up, uh, set up email confirmation. Perhaps it's another kind of developer task, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that, is that like now after the refinement, we understand better. We have a better and shared knowledge about what we should do during this sprint. That's more or less like this. Of course, after sprints, the team will be more experienced on what's possible or not to do within one sprint. So it's not a matter of like finding or, I don't know, guessing better. But the idea is like to commit to what matters and then adapt and then adapt and then deliver value and then adapt and, and so on. After the sprint, the sprint planning, it's time for us, of course, after the sprint planning, we have the sprint backlog to work on it. So the sprint backlog is a subset of the product backlog. And this sprint backlog will be uh, worked like from two or four weeks. Uh, during these uh, two or four weeks, uh, it's um, another uh, a practice that, scrums, uh, that, that Scrum uh, introduces. Uh, the daily scrum, which is a meeting, you, it used to be like it uses to be like 15 minutes, where basically you everyone on the team has the opportunity to communicate blocks, also to like uh, share what's going on on his uh, on, on like the, their tasks uh, in order to create like a shared understanding of the progress of these tasks, and also finally to adjust the approach. Uh, towards the sprint goal. For example, if I find if I'm working on something and I find a block that will be super difficult to solve and perhaps it invalidates the the purpose of doing what I'm doing, it's better to call the PM uh, the the, P, uh, the product owner and say, hey, is there something that delivers more or less the same value towards this goal that's better for us to develop instead of this that is perhaps blocked and I need more time to to uh, I don't know, to fix it. And then the team adjusts this. And what matters is that after these two or four weeks, we'll have a increment to deliver for, for the client. So that's the, the idea. And then we have, after we, we have this increment, we go to the sprint review, which is a meeting that we have the opportunity to present the increment, the, this increment What's the increment? So it's a piece of working software that will be used like in a real world by our, uh, by our uh, clients, our customers, right? This is the increment. Um, and then we can, during the sprint review, present this increment to stakeholders, key users, and also the product owner can like uh, be aware of some things that happen uh, during this uh, presentation, for example, some feedback and things like this, and it can be added to the product backlog. That's okay. Um, we also gather feedback from this uh, from these people, and now and finally, uh, there is something else because let's imagine we have the like the the suggestion that the Scrum official uh, suggestion on the like team team sizes is around like uh, 10 people from four. I don't remember is it's from four. I can confirm this uh, information, but for from four to 10 people, more or less. So let's imagine we have like 10 people in this team. It's normal for us to sometimes not be on the same page, although we have the daily uh, meetings uh, to, to fulfill this need, let's say, but we are not like 100% aware or of like the details on the development of the other developers. So the idea here is also share the knowledge and present, for example, for me that uh, I am a backend developer, it's important to understand what's being de uh, delivered on the, I don't know, iOS pers developer perspective, for example. So with this, I, I will, I don't know, be able to uh, make decisions better when it comes to, uh, for example, 
um, architecture and design and uh, yeah, like this. So then after the sprint review, which can lead to, we have this uh, arrow here because it can be discovered something regarding like uh, something that can be done uh, to enhance the product. But also we have this other, uh, we have this other uh, arrow because we go, the next step is the sprint retrospective. What's the sprint retrospective? Actually, the sprint retrospective is our place to uh, inspect and adapt our process. So the idea is to gather feedback from everyone to, uh, to, uh, from the team. Like, um, be, of course, it's time also to exercise the Scrum values. So be open for feedback and also give feedback respectfully. Um, and the idea is to like bound our uh, feedback onto uh, four, uh, four pillars, let's say. So people, interactions, processes and tools. So when you uh, give feedback about something that happened, for example, during, during the sprint, it's important uh, to make a relation with one or more pillars or, or, or like these ones. For example, we can say, mm, this sprint, we couldn't deliver, uh, we couldn't deliver this feature uh, on time for the review. So we couldn't present this to a stakeholder. That's bad, right? Yes. If we analyze like uh, the, uh, the, the, from the process perspective, it, it happens sometimes uh, from, I don't know, someone in the team to say, oh, I couldn't get access to some things that was uh, required. So uh, although I requested on time, I couldn't get it. So it's, perhaps it's a kind of like process related or tool related, right? It can be like uh, related to people. Like for example, someone can say, oh, hey, I had other priorities, unfortunately, or I've been busy on something else, and then I couldn't uh, help the team or deliver this uh, as, uh, as intended. So yeah, perhaps it's connected to people. And then we can be like uh, more focused on interactions. For example, the team couldn't communicate that there was a block and then uh, no one took care of uh, this, this block or I don't know, things like this. So the interaction should be enhanced somehow. And finally, I can have a problem with my computer. It's slow or it dead or it dies. And then I have something connected to, 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 uh, to tools. Uh, but the idea here, it's not to focus on the problem, but actually what, how we can prevent these things or uh, do something else to prevent these things from happening in the next sprint. So some things that some answers from for this question can go back to the sprint uh, to the product backlog or to the next sprint backlog perhaps some things can go to the working agreement which is a document uh, that we are going to talk about it's an artifact actually the, the correct term is artifact and uh, and finally uh, some of them can be just a reminding a remind list for the scrum master to address this uh, this item so uh, it can be anything actually, but the idea here is to be open, to be transparent, uh, and to help the, the, the team to perform better next time. And that's it. No one to blame. The idea is to do better next time. That's it. I put this uh, image here, but it's not like this. Sometimes, but not every time, right? And uh, then after the sprint retrospective, we come back to sprint planning. There is no like space between the, the retrospective and the planning. Like one sprint finishes, in the next second, the next sprint starts. No like, uh, I don't know, space between these uh, two sprints, let's say. And Im like continuing imagining our, um, our uh, Instagram app that we are building, uh, the next step here would be like, okay, let's let's see what we got from the retrospective and for review. No vacation, I can see on chat. No vacation. No, <laughs> no. Actually, the idea of creating a, a shared knowledge of the product, of the progress, and of the delivers and so, this is something that enables the team to have vacations, like healthily, because you can rely on your teammates to do whatever it's needed when you are taking your vacations. So that's that's uh, something as well. Uh, 
But going back to the next sprint planning. So uh, the, the sprint planning, uh, the, no, sorry, the sprint, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, the sprint one finished. And then we see that we could deploy, uh, make the deployment pipelines, make the base design, but unfortunately the user registration couldn't be um, done or delivered as it was uh, supposed to be. So what happens in these situations that we committed to something that we couldn't deliver uh, as, uh, yeah, in, in its full, 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 yeah, fully. Uh, so what happens is that we, this need, these items come back to the product backlog, that's it. And then the project, the product, uh, the product owner has the opportunity to reprioritize everything the way the, the, the product owner thinks it's best. That's it. So for example, this user registration doesn't go for the next sprint automatically because perhaps the context now makes other items from the product backlog to be like more important and more priority over that. So although we wasted time sometimes or spent some time on this, perhaps it's not a good idea to just forward things that are not done to the next sprint. It happens, yes, but it's not a rule, right? And then this is what happens and the sprint is, uh, is, is done. And the next sprint it starts with the sprint planning again. So what we do, we have the product backlog and a new sprint goal. And then the team need, here, uh, given the new goal that I don't know what is this, uh, decided to take the this task, this task, and this task. And we can see that the user registration, unfortunately, it's not there anymore because it doesn't make sense for the project owner and also the team to take care of it now. And that's okay, because what matters is, is the sprint goal. And now, of course, the product goal uh, in the end of the day. So yeah, that's it. And then what we have, this full, the same cycle one, over and over again. That's it. This is uh, the iterations, let's say. And the name of this full iteration that take uh, iteration, sorry, that takes two or four weeks from two to four weeks is sprint. That's it. So uh, there are some things that I did, I mentioned, but I'd like to go a bit uh, deeper. So we have some artifacts that the team produces during this, um, during this process. So we talked about the product backlog that the PO takes care of. Uh, we talked about the sprint backlog, which is a subset of the, uh, the product backlog that will be uh, handled during one sprint. So that's okay, we have a deal on that. We have the increment, which is the result of the work of the team's work this sprint. It's something we are delivering. This is the increment. This is one of uh, the uh, Scrum artifacts. And I brought two ones that they are not like described by, by the uh, by the Scrum by the, by the Scrum rules, but uh, it's common uh, used on on companies. So we have the definition of them, which is an agreement or of, of like what's needed for us to consider something as fully done. And then what what does it mean like uh, in in a real world scenario? If it's done it's not coming back to the product backlog. It's finished, it's delivered. If it's not done, if it's partially done, if it's just a single piece of code missing or testing or anything else, so it's not done and it comes back to the product backlog. That's it, that's the deal. And the last thing is the working agreement, which uh, is less used, uh, yeah, less, less used than the definition of done if we, if we compare, but uh, it's, it, it, it can be anything actually, but it's a document uh, with a set of rules and uh, guidelines for the team to work better and better. And this working agreement is often something that uh, the team updates every sprint uh, based on what's, uh, what's the, like, uh, What's the outcome from the sprint retrospective? So the team goes to retrospective, discuss, and then adjusts the working agreement. And here I have for you like uh, 
one example of uh, definition of done, but it's not, I mean, the team needs, there are some like uh, frameworks to help the team to discover what's its definition of done, because if the, the context changes, the definition of done also change. So that's adapt adapt adaptability as well. So for example, here we have like, oh, for a task to be done, okay, we have the unit, unit tests passing, we have the code reviewed, we have the acceptance criteria uh, met, and other things. That's it. That, that's a list of things that can be, that should be, I don't know, met uh, in order for us to uh, find um, a backlog item as done. That's it. Simple, right? And the next thing is uh, a kind of working agreement. So we have here like some things regarding like timing. So we have our daily uh, in a certain slot on other uh, meetings. And when it comes to communication, we have some things defined and we have like uh, our work time like the, the described again. And yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's mostly the most lead. It happens, for example, that during the retrospective, we discover that some people uh, are like working, um, I don't know, uh, early morning, and the other part of the team is working like uh, at night. So the idea here is perhaps is to say, okay, so the overlap time will change because we need like more interactions. And so, I don't know, it's just out of my, uh, out of curiosity, but yes, that, that that's some, something that uh, can be done. Uh, after uh, a sprint retrospective that affects the, the working agreement. And okay, finally, I have some like uh, pieces of advice for developers to stand out when it comes to collaborating in an agile uh, environment. And it's not connected to Scrum itself, but it's connected to like how to collaborate and deliver more value not only coding, let's say. So uh, the first idea here is deliver value. So that's it. Uh, the first thing when it comes to delivering value or more value is uh, support to the product owner. It's common for us to find developers that find that, I don't know, they think bore, it's boring to break down the work, to describe tasks, they also sometimes say like, oh, I don't, I won't commit to something because perhaps if it's, if it's something, something changes, then they will like push me. So yes, let's don't do that. But actually supporting your product owner, you're uh, helping your entire team because the product owner will bring more, much more value on its, um, on its like uh, prioritization and also descriptions and things like this. So yeah, and of course you're uh, helping the shared knowledge. So um, do that. It's a very good approach and uh, it will help you to deliver more value to your team. The second things is like automation, continued delivery and things like this. Why I put it there? Perhaps it is connected to code because for example, copy and paste code, it's bad. Bad for what? If you're every two weeks delivering value for your customer, there's no there's no room for like manual tasks and things that you need to repeat, and there's no point on doing that. So let's automate that. You can come back to your PO, and PO stands for product owner, and uh, and tell this person to put in the product backlog an item like automate something or improve something. It's common that we heard, uh, hear the, the term technical debt, because that's it. It doesn't deliver value to the project, but it delivers value to the process itself. So that's the idea, to address, uh, identify and address this technical debt and also automate everything that's, uh, every, yeah, the most, the best. And uh, the, next, the next one is uh, sharing knowledge. So it's common also like a misconception of, okay, if I know something, I'm special. So my team needs me and yeah, that's awesome. But actually it's, uh, it's a counter, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's the opposite because for example, taking the vacation example, uh, if you are the only one who knows something, 
if you are on vacations, either something will be put on fire or uh, you need to work during vacations. So uh, the idea here is to help and share your knowledge uh, to reduce, of course, bus factor. So the team won't uh, rely on so only one person. And the side effect, and it's an ex excellent side effect for you, is that you create a kind of like a thankful sensation on other developers and also other people that are around you. And you perhaps become like a technical reference or something like this, but uh, it's super important to deliver uh, value uh, effectively uh, to share the knowledge because uh, we reduce like how much we rely on like one single person. And last, uh, the last thing, absolutely. And the last thing is uh, to join discussions that are kind of out, out of your like comfort zone. For example, uh, I got myself, it's, a, it's an actual example. I got myself uh, discussing um, back-end architecture and uh, architectural and some other chains on, on the back-end uh, side of uh, a project that I, I was uh, like develop, developing. And then we were planning to change some things and we, know, we knew that perhaps we could introduce some like breaking chains but we investigated all the backend services and how it's connected uh, onto each other. And it was kind of safe. But during the next discussion, uh, our iOS developer, she said, hey, I knew that you, uh, I, I saw you, you guys are planning to do that, but I found uh, a dependency on iOS code that will break. So we need to put that on the backlog as well, because otherwise, it will break the client uh, the client experience at the end of the day. And it was super nice because uh, it enhanced how we delivered this like uh, the solution uh, in the end of the day. Because uh, sometimes, although you think you have everything mapped, perhaps another perspective will help you. But in this case, I'm super encouraging you to be the one to bring this other perspective. So if you join this like uncomfortable discussions, firstly, you can learn. So if you just act, listen actively, you can learn. But if you have something to contribute, it will be super nice and it will help your team to deliver value, perhaps more value, perhaps faster, perhaps safer, I don't know. So that's a, a good idea. And, uh, a part of that where you perhaps can think or wonder, like, where can I get more information about Scrum? So for me, I mean, the best place is scrum.org, especially this URL here. I can share with you on, on the comments for you just to click on it, uh, because it's uh, there are many pieces of resource there for you to explore. And if you think, uh, it will be valuable for your career. You can explore also the certifications that they have um, they have um, available there. They have like online courses, on-site courses. Uh, of course, you have other uh, different like providers for these certifications and also um, and also courses. But I'm showing this here for you guys because I personally got the this professional Scrum Master uh, certification without any course. Actually, I just studied by myself and uh, discussed with some things that were uh, experienced, or experienced on this area. And uh, I, I, I can say that personally, uh, it helped me to be, I don't know, to collaborate better uh, within my team, which you use it to use Scrum, for example. But also, I think it's uh, helpful uh, for like the entire team to talk in the same language, let's say, because uh, sometimes you say, okay, let's do it uh, iteratively, for example. But if not everyone has this like concept, you need to advocate perhaps. So if the team has the knowledge, nice, you're speaking the same language. But if not, if you have, for example, knowledge about it, you can advocate, you can teach them. And it's perhaps also something regarding sharing the knowledge. So the certification is optional in my opinion, but the learning towards the certification, in my opinion, is very, very good. Uh, finally, 
thank you very much. Uh, this is how I feel about this presentation. I'm super happy. Uh, feel free to reach me out on LinkedIn or, or by email. And yeah, time for, for questions. Yes, thanks a lot, Danilo. Um, so I think we have a few minutes for questions. Um, so I would say if you have a question, you can just raise your hand and um, and you can ask those or you can just drop it in the chat also. We yeah, I think. Yeah, go ahead, Excel. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, great. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, thank you, uh, Daniel. The presentation was really insightful. And, like, I just liked the uh, practical uh, example as well, especially using the Instagram. Um, but, yeah, I was just wondering, like, why is or how is um, Scrum preferred over other agile methods such as Kanban? Because, like, I read, um, you know, that sometimes people prefer Kanban also because it sort of eliminates the whole meeting because sometimes, um, if not managed well, I mean, obviously the way you've explained it, if managed well, Scrum is like a very powerful management tool, but like sometimes if it's not managed well, managed well the meetings can really <laughs> become a pain. So, um, yeah, I was just wondering like your thoughts on why Scrum is preferred over Kanban or Maybe if, if they can be combined, I don't really know, but yeah, just wondering. Oh, absolutely. Let me see if I have this uh, here because, uh, because uh, no, I don't have it here, but um, actually there is one certification on scrum.org, which is called like professional scrum with Kanban because yes, absolutely. It can be combined. I'm not sure why it's like, uh, I don't know what, it, it used to be like trending uh, because like it helped uh, many like many companies to like deliver faster and better so perhaps that's why it was trending but i personally uh, don't use like a pure scrum let's say because I, I i totally agree with you about the overhead uh caused by these like uh, meetings although i i um, i believe they are needed or they are not needed, but um, the outcome from these meetings are needed to uh, allow the team to be more effective, let's say. So it's it's common, for example, for some teams to do the dailies, but using only, using Kanban and some uh, WIP, WIP limits. WIP is, stands for work in progress. So the idea is to like limit uh, how many tasks you have in which like step of your funnel on Kanban and uh, it will like uh, in, in enhance the focus of the team. So once again, focus is perhaps one agile, uh, is part of the agile mindset. It's uh, also uh, so, uh, mentioned by Scrum uh, values. And once again, on Kanban, we can see that it, it help, help us on keeping focus. So I think there, there is a great overlap on all of these ones. Another example, it's common for uh, teams to use pair programming. And pair programming, uh, it, it's uh, mentioned on XP, which stands for extreme programming, which is another methodology uh, for, uh, for uh, software development. And it's also agile. And it's also um, so, uh, something that mentions uh, focus. So yeah, I think it, the team should be I don't know, open and free enough to test things out and see what happens uh, best for each uh, team. Because I believe if the context changes, uh, the team needs to adapt. And if the adaptation requires you to, um, I don't know, leave Scrum behind, do it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, I really like the last part about like adaptation because like, um, as you said, like, one of the like main goals of Agile is to just help you help the team meet like the changing business requirements. So like, yeah, the, I think, as you said, the key word is adaptation, like any method that will actually allow your team to adapt to meet the customer needs or business requirements are just desired. So yeah, thank you. Well, oh, thank you. Great. Um, 
think we only have one minute, so maybe we can wrap up. Um, you've dropped a lot of uh, great uh, stuff here, Danilo. Um, so I just want to encourage you. I'm, I'm dropping Danilo's um, profile on Mentor Color. Um, for those of you that haven't booked a mentor yet, go and book Danilo and book other mentors on the platform. And um, feel free to uh, give your feedback once you receive the feedback form. And uh, thanks for today. Thanks for joining us. You're muted, Danilo. Sorry, I was just saying thank you very much, everyone. I'm super happy for being here. So yeah, we're going to be um, summarizing and sharing the slides. So watch out for those. Thank you so much. All right. Maybe Danilo, you can stay uh, for a few minutes. Sure, absolutely.